Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary, and I've got in the house with me here, Mark Spencer. <laughs> Going to show us some more uh, some motion love, maybe. I am right. Are you going to push yeah. the envelope? Oh wait, you know what? In these last series, you've been kind of showing us things that inspire you. Yes. You know, people that inspire yes. you. Yes. Other artists. What's really been exciting now that motion has got some maturity behind it. Yeah. There's been, uh, you know, an emergence of people who have embraced it and done some interesting things with it. And yeah. We've talked about a few other people today. I want to give an example of a uh, of a technique from a guy named Zach Perrick. Zach Perrick, this is for you, baby. Zach Perrick, this is for you. So uh, Zach teaches at the School of London, I think. It's on his site. This is his website right here, mm -hmm. embryo.me.uk. So I think he's in the UK. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and we chatted early on, and he was really into motion. He's got a very good artistic sensibility. He does some interesting things. There's lots of tutorials on his website. But I want to show you something that he came up with that I just think is kind of fascinating. And uh, this is where we're going to start. So I have what looks like to be one image, and in fact, if we look in the file browser, it looks like one image, but you can tell by the file name that something is going on there. Okay. The brackets with the little pound signs indicates that this is actually an image sequence. Okay. Okay? And in fact, if you ever have shot a series of digital stills and you go into Motion's file browser to look for them, you may only see one and wonder what's going on. But anytime you have a sequentially numbered set of files, Motion will see those as one file. Treat it like a movie, then. Treat it like a movie. Yeah, you can uncollapse them. There's a little button at the bottom here that allows you to show image sequences as collapsed, which is on by default. If I turn that off, you'll see that actually I've got these four faces, face 01, 02, 03, and 04. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll recollapse that there. So if I play this now, it comes in and you just get, um, by default, you just get one face per frame. Now, it doesn't look like that here because I've actually brought the speed way down. And you'll see if I scrub the speed back up. Oh, back up to 100%. Yeah, or if I just stop and put 100% in here, you, sometimes you can only enter values in there if it's stopped. Uh, you'll see at the beginning, it'll just play very quickly, boom, and it's gone. Right. Okay. Right? Boom, and it's gone. But what I did is I slowed it way down to around 1%. I think it was like 1.2% so that it extends way out. And now you see each face kind of go from one to the next to the next. There's, there's one, and there's one, and there's one. Oh, it doesn't quite get all of them. I'm going to hold the Option key down and make it go a little bit faster, just to make sure we can see everybody in here. There we go. OK. So you might wonder, well, so what? <laughs> right? Because right now, it's just these straight cuts. But here's the thing. You can use optical flow retiming as a way to do a kind of morphing. Oh, like that uh, Michael images. Jackson video. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, you could call this a poor man's morphing, okay. or if you do it in the right way, it can be interesting. It doesn't always work out great, but it's a really interesting idea about optical flow, because mm -hmm. optical flow is usually used just to make... Speed you know, changes. Speed change, yeah, yeah. Something in slow motion look very fluid by creating new in-between frames, because right. that's what it does. It analyzes the different uh, frames I see and going. creates new in-between frames, new information. So if I turn on optical flow under the frame blending options here, it's actually going to kick in right away because uh, I, I had done it before, so it's analyzed it. It usually takes a few minutes to analyze, sure. but this does it pretty quickly because you have some images. And now you see I've got this kind of morphing effect going on. Oh yeah, right from from one face to the next, and it's not perfect. It doesn't match all the eyes up and do all that stuff, uh, but it does create kind of an interesting morphing effect that you can use on on faces or, or other types of images. Sure, uh, you can even make it uh, because it's retiming and because it's optical flow, once it's analyzed, you can change the retiming and you don't have to analyze it again. You don't get that hit. That right. Processing. Yeah, you don't go like, oh, I got to figure it out all over again. So here's an example where I've, I've used variable speed. In fact, if I hit Command-8 to open up the keyframe editor, you'll see I've got a set of keyframes for the speed and you have it going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it creates kind of a different look to the effect. And obviously, yeah. you've got faces here, but you could do this with Any anything. artwork, anything. And the whole trick is to use still images. Mm -hmm. They can be pics or JPEGs or pings that you number sequentially. OK. Bring them in, slow them way down, and apply optical flow. Here, here's an example of something completely different, where I've taken two images, one of stone and one of grass, and done the same thing. And these are actually, let me make sure optical flow is turned on for this as well. 
the optical flow is turned on. You can see this sort of changing from one to the next. Uh, and these are images from, from Motion's library, and they're oh, very wow. high resolution images. So it, it kind of has to work on it a little bit. Sure. It's a little hard for it to push through. But it has an interesting effect. Yeah. So uh, it's not something I necessarily recommend to do like a pr if you want to do a perfect morph. That's not what it's about. It's more about sort of an interesting effect that you can apply and think about and kind of throw into the mix that I would never thought of using optical flow in this way. I just think slow motion. But Maybe for backgrounds and things like exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, having one drawing morph into another, just a variety of very interesting things. So just a fun thing to, to play around with and try out. Optical flow to create morphing on still images. Now, I've been to your website recently, applemotion.net, and, uh, and and for those who haven't, you are you not only do you blog and, and also talk about your training, which you can find at rippletraining.com, but you're also exposing people to other artists. And you know, if you see something that's cool that inspires you, do you put that up there as well? A absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's exciting to me that more and more people are, are embracing this application and finding interesting things to do with it. And uh, that's how I learn. I mean, I remember when, when Final Cut came out in 1999, I learned by reading the forums about what worked and what didn't, besides going through books and everything. I, t I learned a ton. So I'm always on the forums, always trying to understand what people have trouble with and what people are interested in and what people have come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, and they come up with some really, really interesting stuff that I would have never, never thought of in a million years. So it's really fun to see the community building. Well, and it's, it's also cool that, I mean, you, you're definitely working at the top of your game, but it's, it's, it's great to see that, you know, what other people are doing is inspiring you and, and making you think about your work differently, yeah, too. Yeah, always, always. Mark, thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Always great to see you. All right, Brian. And thank you again for watching Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary.